Hey, Worship Teens, welcome back. Brandon Dempsey of WorshipTeenTraining.com. So great that you're here today. Man, we got a fantastic show, a fantastic hangout lining up for you right now. We're bringing in the good folks over at Facebook Live, and also we got it running on Twitter and YouTube Live. So thank you so much for joining us today on this very special Worship Team Hangout with none other than Dan Stiff. So we're going to get into that in a second. Uh, we want to say hello to our awesome co-host, Rich Kirkpatrick. Rich, how are you doing today this morning? I'm doing good this morning. It's West Coast, so the coffee is still warm and not finished yet, but I'll make it. Hey, hey. You can't go wrong with that. I mean, any day with coffee is a great day. So it's 9 o'clock here. 9 o'clock. I'm away. So, there you're awake, so that's good. And you guys are awake because you are here, and it's fantastic. So if you're joining us, uh, thanks so much. Worship Team Training, what do we do? We come to your church and we provide hands-on workshops for your worship team. We also work with your worship leaders one-to-one in our mentoring program. You can go to worshipteamtraining.com to find out more. Also, follow us on Twitter. A lot of you guys are following us. At the address is at Worship Team, as well as on Instagram, Pinterest, uh, UVersionBible.com. I mean, Dan's following us, and we're following Dan. Uh, so it's been awesome today uh, to have this moment to bring to you this special broadcast. And so let's get right to it, shall we? Uh, I want to introduce to you uh, a guy that God has used in so many amazing ways. And I know my brother and I grew up li- listening to hard rock albums. I mean, everything from metal to uh, classic rock. Um, Anthrax has been one of the biggest bands that we listen to. My brother and I play guitars and drums, so we all went at it, you know. And then come to find out, I get this phone call. I get this phone call from this guy back in the fall, this last year. And we're both uh, endorsed by Line 6, and so, you know, he's calling, asking me, hey, you know, we're, we're trying to get some things together. We talked a little bit further, and he said, yeah, this is Dan Spitz from Anthrax, and I'm thinking, Okay, it didn't really register because I, you know, you speak to different people all the time. Um, but when he said no, this is like Dan Spitz. I'm going, okay, wait a minute, hold on. Yeah, you mean that Dan Spitz? <laughs> He's like, yeah, that's what I'm trying to tell you. And so we just kept on talking, and sure enough, I mean, uh, as through the conversation, we, you know, we we hit it off so great. Um, I mean, this guy loves Jesus, loves music, as you know. He's telling me about his salvation story. The next week, we were in a three-hour conversation about his testimony, what God's brought him through. So let's just go there right now. Some people call him as a rock locomotive fueled by passion, love, and grace. As the lead guitarist, co-founding member, co-producer of the band Anthrax, uh, Dan Spitz has has sold more than 30 million albums worldwide for songs he has co-written. He's been nominated for three Grammy Awards. Uh, across the globe and more than 50 arena tours spanning 32 countries and five continents, count them on the hand right there, released 10 studio albums and upwards of another 50 de- derivatives of them, and Anthrax broke the mold. I mean, they, as you, if you know your rock music history, they were not the stereotype. Uh, these guys broke every shell, and what's even more amazing is that God broke through the shell of Dan Spitz's heart, and he's here to share all about that with us today. So if you want to read more about Dan Spitz, go to danspitz.com. And without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dan Spitz. How are you, my brother? I'm doing very good. How are you doing today? Doing great, man. It's finally great to have you face-to-face here. Uh, it's just wonderful to be here and, and uh, wonderful to have the breath of life as I woke up this morning. As I was telling you earlier than normal, because I'm running studio hours and video hours, uh, I'm kind of a late night guy to begin with, so I'm usually up till six o'clock working in the studio. And uh, but um, you know, rolling out of bed uh, to talk about what matters the most to me uh, is uh, more important than anything. So I'm just glad to be here. Yeah, well, it's it's awesome to have you here, Dan, and. I, I, both you and I said this, that it, it was no coincidence that God lined us up and put us together to speak, so grateful for that, grateful for your friendship. Never used that word. <laughs> <laughs> what I, word? I learned that one early on. Coincidence, uh, was, coincidence does not exist. Yeah, exactly. exactly. He, aligns, he aligns it all. If there's a coincidence, I need to run. Well, you told me, you told me that when, when we first spoke. 
So that kind of freaked me out just a little bit. Yeah, um, I, I think what you do and what I do, we both see a lot of what people in the secular world called coincidences, and we know we have yeah. to pray about what that coincidence is, take that our little baby step or our little drink of God's baby milk, you know, as it says in his word, and uh, pray about it and then see if that coincidence <laughs> is yeah. his or if it's not his. So that's why I just wipe clean that word and yeah. move, on, move on in his grace. Awesome, awesome. Well, hey, let's. Uh, how about we just get to the heart of it right now? I mean, can you kind of talk about, share your testimony? How did God save you? What was it like during those those dark days of anthrax? What did God do in your life to to bring the gospel to you in which it made sense? Share us, share with us about your background. Sure, you got what three, four hours on this show or something? Uh, like something that? like that. Rich, are you good for that? <laughs> I will see. Yeah. Uh, well. <laughs> What's kind of funky about me to um, some people that might be watching is I'm a Messianic Jew. Um, you know, some people say Jews for Jesus. Some people say I'm just a Christian. Um, you know, I basically am exactly what Jesus was. I'm a purebred, pure lineage Levite Sephardim Jew. That means nobody for five and a half thousand years has broken the lineage or married outside uh, Jewish blood or had children outside of Jewish blood until me. Mm -hmm. um, no one has come to Christ in my lineage until me. So um, we don't even you know, know what the New Testament is. Uh, as far as being Jewish, I was brought up Orthodox. So women sit upstairs in synagogue. Men sit downstairs. We're segregated. I went to 13 years of Hebrew school. That's only spoken in Hebrew. Um, so keeping it kind of short and sweet, um, I don't know what a Holy Spirit is. I don't know what a Trinity is. I don't know any of this, you know, um, you know, what being a Christian is or how, how to know Jesus. So, um, when we get saved, someone like me and we come to Christ, it's, um, it's, it's quite unique. Let's say I've talked to other believers that are like me. And uh, the Holy Spirit just really uh, cleans our clock. <laughs> there's no, there's no doubt. You know, once you do give your life to Christ and you are, you know, fully broken and saying the sinner's prayer, as you know, anybody can say the sinner's prayer. But when you, you know, fall to your knees and just give Him everything, you are. Yeah. Um, you know, the the Holy Spirit comes in you, which it did in me in '93. That's when it happened, and I'll touch on that. <laughs> But I first wanted to touch on, on how, how it affects me a little bit different, possibly. Um, I don't, uh, because I don't know anything like that, I'm on a tour bus in 1993 when, when, when I gave my life to Christ. And my, um, who I call my sister is actually my ex-sister-in-law. She's still my sister. Uh, she's radically born again in a Southern Baptist church. She got saved. So she's, she's basically a pastor to me. Hmm. She knows the word sideways. But she let my journey happen the way it should because I was the last person on earth as far as she was concerned that would be saved. I was a Jewish guy in the, one of the biggest bands in the world, had everything I need, mansions, whatever you know, I needed. And I would laugh at her going, you know, you're out of your mind. You, you, know, you went off on a tangent. You're crazy kind of thing. And when I got saved, I'm laying on a bus and the Holy Spirit starts to, you know, um, you know come inside of me and I, I'm you know, we didn't have cell phones back then, but I would stop at a truck stop. I'd call her from wherever I am in the world, and I'd say, what is this? I'm feeling like, you know, it's like feels like the chills I get, you know, when it's cold outside or whatever it is, but it's like waves of it all through my body, like something's happening. Like, what is this, you know? You know, because as a, as, a, as a Jewish believer or as a Jewish person growing up, we're, you know, I've, I'm based totally on intellectual properties. I have to know intellectually what's going on. So, like, I'm like a stubborn horse. And she's just laughing. <laughs> Don't worry, you'll find out. Click. You know, that kind of thing. And, you know, I'd go on and she's just like, just go get a Bible and start reading it. So I went to get a Bible. And what did I pick? Of course, I didn't go get a Bible. I took it from the hotel and it was a King James Bible. So I didn't understand a word it was saying. I read that for about a week. Called her up, started yelling at her. I'm like, I read this whole thing five times. I have no idea what's going on. She says, 
what do you read it? And I said, the New King James Bible. She says, no, you idiot. Go to Barnes & Noble and go get a NIV or, you know, New King James, something that you can understand. So I got that, and then I started reading from page one of the New Testament, and my life, I mean, and to change, God just started to manifest himself in me day by day over a two-week period. Um, I just was changed and reborn, and um, it just started from there. Man. So uh, when you're in that exp in experience, I mean, the band members around you must have been flipping out like, what's up with Dan? Uh, what's going on with him? What was that like for the rest of the guys? Um, at that point in time, you know, um, it was life-changing for me, obviously. Um, things that were going on, you know, you have to remember Anthrax is a band that's based on no drugs. We were like the cleanest band that there was. You know, we, we broke all those rules that you know about, but in music terms, you know, which we can always talk about, but they're pretty much stamped in history. Um, I'm always an innovator in that realm, but um, yeah. So there was. It's not like there was all this crazy, crazy stuff going on like other rock bands. You know, you know we're we were clean bands, you know, and no drinking, et cetera, et cetera. But to see my change was, was quite drastic, and it did happen quite fast. So by 95, um, you know, we're a band that was on the road, you know, probably 300 days a year. And when we're off the road, we're only off the road for a week. And then it's back into writing the next album after three and a half years of touring. And then it all just starts over again. By 95, um, I, I just didn't fit in. It just I couldn't be on stage listening to some of those words. It, it, it was, I know the whole public now has watched um, my friend from Corn, um, you know, be radically saved because now we have the internet. You all got to watch that. In my time, in 93, you would have watched the same exact thing happen to me, me probably being one of the first people of that happening to in, in my realm of music. Unfortunately, um, we didn't have this technology back then. I didn't have the answers back then. All I had was my sister and a few other people um, who, I, who I fell into for help. Mm. So, um, 95, uh, I left uh, Anthrax and you know started a new path in life, which I felt was more in line um, with uh, my, uh, my beliefs and what had happened to me and God manifesting himself in me. Wow. Um, can you tell us, like... Does that make any sense to you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. It's, it's a lot it's of sense. Like, yeah. Um, can you tell us, like, the... Uh, you were telling me that... Uh, talk about the formation of Red Lamb and uh, what that was all about. Okay, we're really skipping now. Okay. No, all right, go back then. Go back and talk about pre... No, that's all right. No, what I was going to say was there is a large time frame between the two yeah. um, where I did need to cleanse myself, which if, once again, if you've watched other people who have been kind of radically saved from a point where not even knowing what a Holy Spirit is or, or what a New Testament is, but knowing the entire Bible. Remember, I know, just so Christians know, if you don't know much about um, Judaism, our Bibles are exactly the same, word for word note for note, syllable for syllable, right up to the first page of the New Testament. And I am versed in that in Hebrew. Okay, I studied it for 13 years in Hebrew school. I'm a you know, brought up Orthodox Jew. So it's not like I'm blind to the entire Bible and I had to start from, you know, step one. Um, so I needed some quiet time because things were happening to me and realigning themselves as being a born-again Christian. And uh, I just didn't fit in living the life that I was leading. So, yeah, I walked off stages, sold out shows that, you know, we were selling out. Madison Square Garden was a small show probably. And, um, and that's, what we, that's just what you have to do at that point in time when you're radically saved. As we now can see, many, many people uh, um, through technology, that, you know, as a new Christian, um, you, you know, you get your clock clean. It takes time to, to settle back down and, you know, yeah. and come back to the world. And so we can go back into the world yeah. uh, and do the good works. 
and save souls, bringing us to Red Lamb. So years later, um, when I uh, when I when I was strong enough in the Word and I could go back into the world and hold my own, um, a friend of mine, I, I was actually spent a lot of time in Switzerland, becoming a master watchmaker of complication specialist for about. 10 years on and off of schooling, um, I hold some kind of wacky credentials over there, and that was my quiet time. And one day I was sitting there, and I pretty much reached the top in what's called the complication room of watchmaking, where we're taking apart the world's most complicated wristwatches. And um, it's uh, and me and my friend Dave Mustaine from Megadeth, um, who's also another Christian, is my best friend, and we speak almost every day. Um, but we have a different kind of relationship. We don't talk about music. We talk about other things, such as God and other things I won't talk about. But it's not about music. We, we're, we're very close, close family friends. And he was always yelling. He started almost yelling at me, like, you're done. You need to come back and play music. And, you know, we need to make a difference for both Christ and for autism. I have two children, identical twins, who, who, uh, who are uh, on the autism spectrum. And um, we're not born with autism. And he's like, you're done. And I, and I kind of looked down the, the row of my watchmakers. And, um, you know, half of them are listening. One guy's got headphones on. And, he, you, know, you know, he's blasting Slayer. The next guy's blasting Megadeth. And and they're working on, like, masterpieces. There's, like, one in the world, you know. They're, they're like me. Um, I work on even crazier stuff, you know, on my bench. But, I mean, these guys, that, that's what calms them. It's not Beethoven, you know. And that's usually half or three quarters of that room. And Dave's on the phone going, like, you need to come back. There's only you and a few of us that, you know, this music um, is in your blood. You know, you, you're, not a, you, you're the creator. You're, you need to come back and start playing and make a difference. So that was it. I, I reached the top, um, uh, and I just closed shop, got on a plane, and came back and started getting – back into music and playing with different people, recording with different people quietly and silently, which led me to start um, Red Lamb with Dave. Um, Dave, uh, I had gone out to his home um, to help him with something, and um, he had heard some of the music that um, me and Donnie, my current singer in Voices of Extreme and videographer, uh, had made, and he wanted to be a part of it and help, and we co-wrote uh, all the lyrics to the entire, excuse me, Red Lamb album, and um, and recorded it in his studio, and he basically stopped Megadeth completely um, for that entire time to uh, to do something um, together, and not just together. All the lyrics are based are God based lyrics, so it was a co co collaborative that really meant a lot to us. Around us the whole time, we had a pastor at all times in the studio, so it was uh, it was a wonderful um, return for me. It's the only way I could, you know, living with a pastor, living with another Christian, writing music the way I wanted to write music, and that started me uh, off to where I am, to leading me to where I am now. Wow. Um, one thing that impressed me, and, and thanks for sharing all that, Dan, because that's it's that's quite a journey that you've been through. And the one thing that I keep coming back to is is I don't think you mentioned yet what kind of uh, what kind of the Jewish lineage you're from. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Well, as I said previously, I'm Levite Sephardim. So if you know your tribes, then a Levite is. Uh, the tribe that was the only people that were allowed into the Holy of Holies. Um, and that's what's in me still. My blood is pure lineage straight back. Um, my blood has never been broken. My children's blood, um, I married outside of uh, being an, another Levite, Sephardim. So if I was a Hasidim Jew, Jewish person, then I would not be allowed to be, um, there would be arranged marriage and I would have to marry another Levite, Sephardim which uh, there's uh, Ashkenazi and then there's Sephardim. So um, that's kind of basically it. You know, you know the, the easiest way to explain it um, is my lineage has not been broken and I'm the first one. I'm the black sheep in, in the tribe. <laughs> <laughs> so I, that's, you know, I don't know. For, for other Christians, the best way I explain it is how I did before is 
we're blind and now we can see. We read that in, in the Word. I was really blind. I knew the Old Testament word for word for, um, you know, from an intellectual standpoint, from, um, from a spiritual standpoint of, of, in Judaism. Uh, my grandfather was, a, was also a cantor in, uh, in, our, in our synagogue. He's the one who blows the chauffeur. Um, it, he's also a watchmaker and jeweler. So I come from a very strict upbringing. So for me to be saved is really radical, and it was very radical. I mean, uh, after the second week of the of uh, of the Holy Spirit entering into me and me giving my life to Christ, I was driving around and you know I would see somebody in a wheelchair or whatever it may be. I mean, I was weeping and crying, and you know, I, I mean, I got my clock cleaned, you know, very much so, and it was a rapid, 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 accelerated change. I couldn't even. I, I'd never stepped foot in a church ever in my life. Um, and my sister uh, guided me through all of this. She sent me to a messianic church in New Jersey, and that helped me because that's basically what I am. You know, I felt a little more normal. Um, at least there was bikers there too, and jackets and stuff like that with tattoos. So I kind of felt felt really cool there too. But what's really funny is that was uh, the, he's become very famous now. That was Jonathan Cain's church. And uh, I think pretty much everyone knows uh, he's gotten pretty pretty large now. But it was very small back then. I mean, maybe three or four hundred people, if not half that back then. So I kind of gra she graduated me, my sister. From she said you have to go there first, and then here, and then here, and then you know. Otherwise, I would have went into a church and like ran out. You know, and I wouldn't know where to go. So um, yeah, I don't know if any of this is making any sense because I'm talking. Yeah, no. I'm talking from a messianic perspective, so it's kind of enlightening to some, and some might, you know, look at me and go, "Ooh, that's kind of freaky." But please understand that I come from an orthodox upbringing. This is a messianic journey, and Jesus was a messianic Jew. If you, I'm basically the same as him, the disciples, and everyone that followed him is what I am. Yeah, if that makes any sense. Yeah, to totally makes sense. Um, Rich, I'm going to throw it over to you in just a second if you got um, something on your heart. Uh, Dan, what I want to know is what's – I guess that's been the most impressing thing for me is that God has used you. I mean you're like – you are a modern-day Levite. I mean when we read about the Levites in the Old Testament, they made music for God. But now being a Christian, what does making music for God mean to you? That's really funny you brought that up. I didn't mention that the, the Levites are the, the, the ones who are right. supposed to make the music. Yes. Um, <clears throat> I really don't have a choice. You know, it's um, I wasn't really given a choice to make music before I was saved. It's uh, it's the gift I was given. We're all given our gifts, and we're supposed to use them for the kingdom and to save souls. Even if it's one soul throughout your entire life, if you save a soul, oh, that feeling is. It's beyond anything that we can imagine, isn't it? Um, if someone has, they know. Um, and I have, obviously, um, said the sinner's prayer with many. Uh, and, you know, seeing the manifestation of some of it that's real, that really happens. And that's just such a wonderful, beautiful thing to know that I'll see that person, you know, in the forevermore. And, you know, I'm appointed to that person to make sure they stay on course as well. So I make that my business. I don't talk about it. I usually don't do interviews like this, as you know. We've talked about that. Yeah. Um, this is a very special thing. You're a very special person. Oh, thanks. Um, so I'm making music for God. Um, everything I do right now, it's it's. I'm returning to playing my electric guitar. God had, had locked me up previously for a year or so to learn a very weird instrument called the Weissenborn lap slide guitar that not many people <laughs> uh, can play. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like the country guys play dobro, but this is, this instrument is it's on your lap, and it's it's very uh, an emotional instrument. It's like a cello meets a guitar meets a bass guitar meets a, meets a piano. You have to play it like a piano with rhythm and lead is both played at the same time, and split your brain like a piano and be able to do so. Um, so um, that was one of my journeys he sent me on, and when he sends me on, 
whatever he sends me on, uh, I pray about it and, and, and do as I'm told. So uh, voice that led me to Voices of Extreme, which is once again, um, this is probably uh, the most incredible band and music that I've ever made in my career ever um, about to be released. And it is uh, God-driven. Um, every song is God-driven because it has me in it. Everything that's surrounding the band and how it's being made is God swinging open doors faster than we can obtain the blessings. Hmm. I, we, none of us have ever seen anything like this. Um, uh, everyone in the band is a Christian. Everywhere along the way of making the music is, is you know, we pray about it and see if it's the right way. But it happens so fast. It, it's I have no words to say how beautiful it is. It's absolutely it's incredible. Wow. Well, it's it's incredible what God has done in your life, Dan. And uh, you know, you're you're special. It's 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 amazing. I, I've seen pictures of your family, your wife, your two kids, and I mean, it's just beautiful the way God has uh, made His music in your life so uh, joyful and and so deep for you, um, Rich. Um, What's going off in your mind as you're hearing all about this? Because you and I talk a lot about song and theology, and now we have Dan on. I mean, like, what's going off in your mind right now? Well, I'm, I'm inspired to meet someone so talented who's humble as well as given. You know, I think uh, what I like to hear, you know, Dan, is just, you know, obviously Brandon and I, you know, we really have a heart for these musicians that are Christians who, you know, they're all over whether they have 50 people uh, that they're playing for and no one will ever know them. Um, but, you know, we all kind of are a tribe of people trying to bring people closer to Jesus. And as someone who has, who knows what it's like to, you know, move a room of thousands of people, you've seen that, um, the power of music. What kind of things um, would you encourage the tribe of uh, Christian musicians to really think about and work on? What, what are the, the things that you... Um, would say, you know, he, you guys got to focus on this. You got to focus on, as musicians, what kind of inspiration could you give to those guys and gals? Um, I see, I see it more than twofold. Actually, um, I see where you're coming from. For me, um, just getting back on the stage is where I feel most comfortable, um, along with my master watchmaking stuff and my autism advocacy um, which is was part of red land that we didn't touch upon I did uh, me and Dave made the first professional song uh, about um, bringing the word autism and autism awareness into any form of music um, mm -hmm. previous to that nobody had, um, had in any genre of music had uh, had a song about autism at, at that level and there was no benefits for autism um, once again, I have identical mirror image twins who are on the autism spectrum, and um, God had put that on my heart as well to go out and to, and, you know, um, and and do do the good works of Him for that, and we did. Um, so whatever He tells you to do, whatever you're gifted as, is what you're supposed to pray about. Make sure it's right, and then every step of that way, pray about it that you're headed down his course. So I'm not really here um, to tell someone what they're supposed to do because he made us each unique. So he's given us all our gifts. Um, for me now, um, to have a friend say like head or fieldy from corn and you know go see them play and right before you know the lights go down, everyone's screaming, ah, you know, you hear that. And we're having a prayer circle behind the drum riser, and there's, you know, eighty or ninety or whatever at a hundred thousand people at a festival, and you know, we're, we're, I'm leading prayer for something like that. As the lights go down, knowing that after the show, that uh, those guys are going to sit and take their time um, to to talk to kids, um, and they have their their other their other um, movement called the whosoever's, as most of us know. And uh, and give back and try to save souls. That means more to me than anything. Uh, yeah. That that's what moves me. Things like that. Things that that people do things, um, not for themselves, but because God has appointed them to do so. 
Um, I think yeah, it's that's uh, really inspiring. And, and taking no credit for it, I, I give all. I mean, I've talked here for a while, and please, I want no one, no one to even think for the slightest bit that um, the pride that I used to have as the old person previous to 1993 even exists, because mm -hmm. all the glory goes to him, and that's why I keep reiterating that everyone who is given that gift of music, art, or anything in the art field and can't go back and can't live in a cubicle and have a job um, and can accomplish that mission that God has set forth in them, you know, pride is the worst thing to have once you obtain some kind of notoriety. You have to go the opposite way and you have to be broken again and realize that you're working for the kingdom to save souls. So, yeah, it may look weird that hey, wait, you know, Dan Spitz is going to go back into the trenches. It's dirty out there. There's there's this, there's that, there's drinking, there's drugs, there's, you know, I don't know, you know, whatever you want to call it from an outsider's point of view. You need to surround yourself with the Christian life. And, you know, I mean, if you follow me virally now that um, lately, you'll, you know, I, I post who I am. I post if I'm at church, if I'm at a yeah. Calvary or a Gateway I'm open about what I am, and um, that's just the way that's going to be. If you don't like it, click off. <laughs> <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, I really, you know, I really don't care, and nobody clicks off, and that's what's quite incredible in yeah. the type of music of my past and the music I'm creating now. All I'm doing in the luxury watch field, which is a thousand times bigger than even music, um, where I live in that world. So and there's a lot of things that are that are that are happening very large in that. I just finished a documentary for CNN that's um, that okay. that was just released and uh, doing very well. Wow. So just be yourself. The only problem I see is um, kind of cookie cutter things that are actually going on in your world. Go for it. And as you know, we have to speak the truth. I'm a thrash metal dude. Do it. And you're only going to get the truth from me, so yeah, come on. That's what we've been waiting for. Yeah, you've had you've had the nice little stories now. Yeah, now yeah, you get thrash go. metal, Dan. Get okay. it. Go. Well, checking into churches and seeing um, bands. That's very hard for someone who's a musician to check into a smaller church, nice and early, and there's your worship band, and they're not up to par. They're not clued in on. Not just song, or not just being a musician, but not clued in um, the word that should be spoken between songs, et cetera, et cetera. I know this is what you gentlemen are, are there and appointed to do, and make sure that this is correct. It would, as as a new believer, it would almost make me cringe, you know, as a musician to see other musicians who gave their heart to God and were trying their hardest to be there, but being in a church, say. Fort Lauderdale Cavalry, you know, a huge church where the band is incredible. I mean, I think the first time I went there, they had all of Michael Jackson's backup singers from the tour. <laughs> from the tour. Like, no joke. Yeah, yeah. I was like, whoa. Like, this, <laughs> it, it's song that brings me in. That's it, Worship is the main part of where I live. I get my word more prophetically than, than reading intellectually anymore. Um, so song is where, where I live, so the band has to be up to par and just blow me away. Um, it, it, it's very, 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 very important. And, um, and I take that into what I do because that's where I come from. From anyway, we have zero room for error you know, in the music that, that I create, so I expect the same from, from everywhere else. The problem I see now is it's more of um, it's pre-planned. Everything is pre-planned. Every guitar player sounds like the guy from Hillsong United. They have got a bunch of reverb on his guitar. He has to play the same looking guitar. I mean, <laughs> you don't want to know. I've offered a few times to play with certain bands, and I've gotten you know. Obviously, if I start to play with a worship band in a very large church, that you know, there's some kids that are going to come in that church that would have never come in that church before. Yeah. I don't care how big that church is. And I've offered, and I've gotten this cookie get cutter letter back after speaking to the band members, and they're just like, just, just come, just come, jam, just, just whatever you want. There'll be fifty thousand kids here. You're freaking out. We, you know, we'll save souls. You know, but you know, you get this cookie cutter email. You will plug into a 
hollow body guitar that looks like the guy from Hillsong United, you will be playing through a matchless Chieftain amplifier, and the reverb will be just like the guy from Hillsong United, slash a little bit of U2 in there, and you know it's like this mat this exact cookie cutter thing, and it, it it's. Are you for real? I am for real, and I've seen it. To you. And did they did they not know who you were? And then here they are they're trying. To, they, they're, they're trying to have you be like somebody else, like another, like what we all experience. Um, exactly. Yeah, this Dan. Now, now, this is after. Now, this, just so you know, that, I apologize for that, Dan. <laughs> this, 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 just so you know, this is after. Basically, I'm a very, very quiet person. You, you catch me talking like this, you know. This is uh, you, you ask me a question about about God, Jesus, the Trinity, um, my salvation, watchmaking, and music. You'll catch me talking like this. Um, other than that, I'm a very, very quiet, homebody type of person. Um, That's why you're here. So yes, the whole band they 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 would see me eventually if I keep going to a certain church. Somebody sees me. The band sees me. They come up. They recognize who I am. Even looking like this, <laughs> and you know, of course, they they realize what I realize. If I pick up my flying V and play on stage, like I said, there's going to become people coming through that door. It's, we can save some souls that we wouldn't have saved. Um, that's, that's the point. whole point. That's the whole point. So, but then you get the guy, you get the call from the music director. Not a clue. You know, it's it's all. That's what I'm talking about right. Yeah, and this is. What I see is is a very very large problem because we're supposed to just save souls and take people in such as myself the way we are. That means if I get on stage and I'm wearing this, right, I'm there to save souls. Right, not I have to wear it has to be black. I, I have to match this, and it, it's it ain't cutting it for me. So now, like, I need, only because I come I come from think about this before Brandon created a world where. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was yeah. the same thing. Remember the time that Anthrax birthed and Megadeth and Slayer and Metallica, and if you're not familiar with that music, it's now called the Big Four. There's four bands right. that started right. a faster kind of heavy metal that there wasn't wasn't all these names. It was, we just had heavy metal back then. That's the name of the music, and they literally had to make a new name up. Uh, our music and our lyrics were based on... Um, on true life events that happened to us, anything that bothered us could be political, could be anything from the newspaper, whatever it is, whatever happened to us that day, and we speak the truth about it. It comes from the punk rock era, so yeah. I speak the truth. You're going to get the truth from me. That's what we're supposed to be as Christians, isn't it? Right. Not a an exact cookie cutter Broadway play that's going on time to the minute, and everyone is a cookie cutter person. And if that guitar player doesn't make it that day. Here's another guy. He's dressed the same guy. You wouldn't even notice it's another guy. You know, it's that it, it's freaking me out. And, uh, I, I freak out too. I, I freak out too, and I play piano. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's it's uh, I, I'm inspired by. I appreciate your answer. Uh, I think you answered the question perfectly because what a lot of young musicians aren't encouraged to do is to be who God made them to be. Thank um, you. They're not mentored that way. They're told, "Here's these three things you got to dress like, be like, play like," and um, you know, a lot of really good musicians that are young, they don't come back to church because of this. They get burned out. Uh, my concern is is that you know they stick in there and they be prophetic and they work their way up enough where they can really make a difference. That's my fantasy, anyway. It's my hope. That's well, why Brian does this. <laughs> If someone like me checks into a church and um, and be at a wonderful church, and what comes after the worship music is a wonderful message, you know, great pastor, but that happened at, at worship, you know, um, I'm not going back. Mm. And it's so it wouldn't just be me. I'm not singular. Um, mm. And um, it, 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 God made us each unique to do a unique thing, be it music, be it what you guys are doing to save souls. Um, yes, in a band setting, of course, there's a leader. Of course, there's you know it has to be um, um, uh, professionalized. It has to be well, where I come from. There's zero room for error. Everything has to be perfect. Uh, yes, in a church, everything has to land on a certain time limit. But um, 
you know, let's not make it uh, all cookie cutter across the board that we all want to be Hillsong United at every church. And, you know, it, it just, it, I can't. It's, I'm it's, feeling it, dude. I'm feeling it right here. Trust me. Um, gosh, because, see, the thing that's going through my mind right now is that exactly, Rich, what you brought up, Dan. Uh it's like the church has this one image that they have to look like and be like. And I'll, on the inside, Rich and I know from being in ministry for a long time, uh, the leadership kind of sets this forth because they want to look like a show. They want to look like somebody else. Why? Because if they get the right, you know, you know what's in the seats, then it keeps uh, things moving in the church. The offering plate goes around. Uh, money gets into the church. Numbers get in the church. Why? So that they can step back and say, "Look how good God is." And what they're really saying is, "Is look how good we are." They're not. It's not even anything about God. So the thing that discourages us the most, and I want to get your your thought on this, when you see these worship leaders that acted like this, that told you basically, "Don't use your flying B guitar, but you're going to use you know whatever," so that we look like whoever. Um, how do you think the rest of the world sees that when they live life one way on the stage and they live life another way when they get off stage? When I got the band members of that band going, if you stood on this stage one day, and we all would love that. We're all fans of your old music, and I don't like to ever use that word because they're – People aren't fans. They're they're they were always part. They're part of my family. It's the Grateful Dead syndrome of everything I do. I don't. If I wasn't on stage, and I'm when I'm not on stage, uh, I'm in the audience. I'm 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 into the other person's music. Um, if they're telling me, you know, all you got to do is plug in, and you know, we know what will happen. We'll save souls. There'll be you know one one kid who it, or or a person who is a Christian might bring his son who's just learning how to play guitar. Obviously, one of my songs is if he's playing some kind of heavy metal, he's going to learn one of my songs as part of you know trying to learn how to play guitar. If my name is or I'm standing at that, that church, be it a mega church or a small church, they're gonna, the kid's going to want to go to church and he's, even if he's never been there before and he's totally you know, in a rebellious mode. We get to save souls. Now, would you rather save souls, or would you rather look like a cookie cutter Hillsong United band? And yeah. don't get me wrong; I keep mentioning that band. I love that band. I mean, I could play "Oceans" on my Weissenborn lap slide guitar. It's one of the most beautiful songs. As you know, it's just incredible. Right. I'm right. just I'm using that as an example. I could use twelve no, other. No, you're exactly right. You're. I because mean, it, because it's not even in the church. It's the whole Christian music scene. It's right. That, Exactly. Once, there, once there is a Hillsong United, there's 14 more of them. It's the right. same thing outside of the church. So it's like keeping Christians within Christians and keeping that, keeping them all in a little box. And oh, this works for the younger generation. So this is what we'll do. You know, exactly. okay, it's guys in suits yeah. and a table, and, and just like you said, okay, yeah. this this will keep our church solid. Right. And this works. Okay, a little smoke at the two minute mark. And everyone looks this way. Make sure everyone's wearing black shoes. And it goes against everything I've ever, you know, done before I was saved and how God made me. Break every rule there is. When someone says you can't mix heavy metal and hip hop, you know what? Yeah, watch, yeah you watch bet. It. Come on. Watch me do it. Okay, well, well, we can't get that tour insured because when their audience hits your audience, <laughs> they're gonna wreck the place. Okay, then if we, you know, we're not gonna play the guard. Then you know what? We're doing it anyway. We're gonna put it in a bar. We're gonna take a. We're gonna make a bar tour. <laughs> Show you what can be done. Then they'll get it insured. That's what we did with Public Enemy. When the word no comes up, you know, I break that rule. And, yeah. And just how God has set me up, I think that's how the church should be. Keep breaking down those new doors to save yeah. souls. Stop staying in the box, man. Yeah. Exactly. I heard I heard Chuck D was making a country album. Yeah. <laughs> you never know. I mean Steven Tyler just hit one. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I saw I saw that. Um, so yeah, that's what gets me is that I mean here you are a Levite from the direct lineage and you know what music for God now as a Christian, you know what that should be. And then when you walk into these places and you hear that the music is not quite for God. 
I mean, what is that like to you? Hmm. I know I'm getting you started. I know we've already started this fire, but you know, look, you said you'll speak the truth, and that's why we're here. Yep. And and you know, this is this is this is what you gentlemen do. So this is why I touched upon this subject. Um, it, it's not that the music is not for God. Um, anyone I think that picks up a guitar. Uh, and steps on a stage at a church. I, you know, I, I pray and hope that they they have the, um, they're in the right direction and not just doing it to be what we call in the secular world a weekend warrior, which means that a guy is a lawyer, a doctor, or whatever, and he's going to play ACDC and Van Halen songs, you know, at the local bar. You know, those are weekend warriors just to play their instrument. Um, I hope that their hearts in it for God and to save souls. That's what we're all here for. You know, to, to, to get to that point, um, it it just I just think we need to keep moving forward. We've got a good crack. I mean, DC Talk opened the door. You know, when 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 I first got saved, there wasn't a Christian music industry. You know, yeah. it was just art, and it was DC Talk. You know, if you remember, and um, you know, it's it's grown to great proportions. Um, both me and 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 Head from Corn have have tried to kind of help that industry a little bit. You know, being that industry always screamed, oh, if only if some of those guys from the other side would get saved and come to our side, we would embrace them like this, just like Jesus embraced and healed. And, you know, oh, my gosh, if only they came over, uh, the whole industry would be wonderful and incredible. And, oh, and you know what? We did. And we went over there. It wasn't so friendly. Mm. You don't see us hanging there anymore, do you? So, you know, you get, it's, it's a little wake-up call from behind the scenes here, and you're going to get it from me because yeah. I'm not going to hold you know, I'll hold this much back, but that's about and that's about it. Um, <laughs> no, it's called Christians in a box. Right. Okay, Christians. You know, it's like when when I first got saved, and I tried to take some of you through that as a as, as a messianic Jew. When you first get saved, you have, I had to be in that box because. You, I had to be surrounded by Christians because I had to learn the walk, learn the way as the Holy Spirit was really taking over. And when I got, you know, got really, really saved, it's, it's not just a, a belief. Um, you know, I, I, I know that um, God is real. You know, it's, it's, it's prophetic in me. So there's no doubt. I mean, I've seen miracles time and time again. So you, you watched... Um, Many other people besides me and Head, um, when we first get saved, certain things happen to us. It's very radical where other people would say, oh, gosh, she's really gone off on a tangent. But slowly we come back, and then we go back out into the minefield just as Jesus did. Mm -hmm. well, that's what we're supposed to do. So I'm ready to go back into the minefield once again, and I am in the minefield. Shouldn't I be embraced? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, you know, shouldn't shouldn't? Um, I mean, there's so many mega churches. How many of me? How many of me? How many of Fieldy from Corn? How many from Head? How many? I mean, I have. I can go on from names, but I don't want to name other names of my friends because previous to me, I didn't know anyone that was really saved in my type of music. Um, and we play all types of music now. We're not contained to a box. My new, my yeah. new band, Voices of Extreme. It, every song is a different genre. It goes from blues to to just regular rock to you know, to, to southern rock. To, I mean, and it's not even that. It's me once again creating um, all new all new genres. Um, shouldn't shouldn't that be embraced across the board? And shouldn't we be welcomed into these mega churches that are supposedly you know reaching the world? Um, um, and unsaved people. Um, we're a voice that uh, that people entrust in people and someone like me that we tell the truth. We're not going to hold back, and the world knows that. Instead of the gentleman that's putting on a show, I'm not Probably. putting on a show, bro. You know, I, I mean, I, this you, you're looking at you know it's these jeans, my Doc Martens right here. This is how I, <laughs> that's how I go on stage. Not skinny jeans. Hold on a second. No, nah, not skinny jeans. <laughs> so, Dan, so Dan, you know what they say about prophets in the Bible? Jesus said a prophet in his own town is not welcome. Oh, good call. And, and I really think that, you know musicians. I think musicians have to embrace their call. We are prophets, 
we, we do, our, and our speaking is not just through the music we create, it's for how we live our life, whether it's watchmaking, whether it's the things that we do matter, and they speak even more than our words speak. And I think it's inspiring for other artists to hear your story and your passion because we need to take the knocks and be who we are. We need to be willing to step into that minefield, as you call it, and uh, be brave like you're being brave. I think if anything, some of us, are scared to break out of that cookie cut even though we dream to. You know, we want to take a, a you do a blues riff on a Hillsongs, you know, uh, thing. Or, or or for me, you know, I, I take I take stuff that's rock and put it on piano and people you freak out. Um, but, you know, it's just whatever, you got to be who you are. And I think, you know, I'm older now, so I, I, I embrace that. But I want the young people to hear this, that, that you know, right. you're a prophet. You're going to take the knocks. And, Dan, you're, you are our inspiring um those of us who create to listen to who God made us to be. Yeah. I keep saying he made, you know, you guys almost tried to put me in a box in the beginning of this conversation, you know, and I said to you, you know, he made each of us unique. He gave each of us a gift. I don't know what your gift is. You know, we keep speaking about music, but he gives each of us a gift. If someone is telling you, um, and trying to deviate you from that gift, and you can accomplish that gift, and that gift leads you to save a soul. That's what he placed us here for. That's why we're saved. You have to go and do it. You know, pray about it. Be very careful. You know, I've learned that because my blessings are, are plenty, and darkness can infiltrate and does at all times, and it wants to veer you, you know, off course. It's, Am I going this way? Uh oh, you know. So we have pastors around us, you know, at all times to make sure that we're on course because the power of someone such as myself or some of my friends and the power of music, as we know, is more powerful than just about anything. Um, you know, that the enemy would love to stop me and us at any given point in time because we can reach tens of millions of people in music. And right. even more now in where I live in the luxury watch field where it's the top 1% of, of the most you know, wealthiest people in the world who, you know, here's your story. They have everything. Diamonds. I mean, I work, you know, you know, on timepieces that are the most complicated things in the world. You would think these pers people who are driving their Lamborghinis and their Bentleys and their, you know, whatever it may be and living in their mansions are the happiest people in the world. But they'll come in and on their timepiece, oh, I would like diamonds everywhere. Come back next month, I would like the diamonds not just everywhere. It's not good enough. I, I want them inside the watch band here. So nobody knows they're there, but they're touching my skin. That'll make me feel better. Mm -hmm. They're not saved. That'll do it. That'll fix it. That'll make me happy. That'll complete my life. That'll do everything. It's not the Ferrari in the mansion and my perfect husband or whatever it may be. They come in a month later. Can you change all those yellow diamonds to black diamonds? It's just not doing it for me. There's that never-ending story that we all hear um, as Christians that there's only one thing that's going to complete you, and that's giving your life to Christ. And you know, after that, you know, we have to go back out there. And and show others, you know, um, what we what we can see now. You know, yeah. I, was, I was blind, and now I can see. And you're not going to stop me from from doing what I'm doing. If you're going to give me a cookie cut of paper for your church and tell me to play a certain way and not be who God created me to be. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I I love that. I I remember when we first spoke on the phone. That's what I loved about you is that right away you said God's called me to go back out into the minefield. And I think that's a revolution for all of us. And you have – God has given you so many barriers that you broke through, Dan, and he's given you such a path. Um, I know one of those paths that's very important to you is autism and uh, autism awareness. Can you speak into that? Yeah, we touched upon that a little bit earlier. I have two uh, ident I have identical mirror image twins um, who were not born with autism, um, and uh, I've been away from music, not just in watchmaking, for a long time, uh, taking care of them and making sure that they got where they had to go and breaking those barriers. So 
um, yeah, you know, life struggles uh, are everywhere f for everybody. But you know, thank God I have Christ to keep me grounded and prayer to keep me grounded as well and make it through those areas. And I felt compelled with, with Dave to, to start that journey that I will never end of autism advocacy. So everything I do has some underlying um, um, field in it to give back. Um, what I call autism awareness, and many people call autism awareness. That just means make people aware of the word itself, what it is. And now it's pretty much touched every family in the world because it's one in every 24th boy born will be on the autism spectrum. That's a CDC statistic uh, of last year, um, and that study is five years old. It's mm. five years behind at all times, so they're saying it's really one in every 12th to 16th boy born. One in every 68th human will be on the autism spectrum. Um, so what I do is what my grandfather does, just so people know, um, I'm not here to take your money. I'm not here for you to donate anything. What, what, what I do, whatever I do, you know, the give back will never be known. My grandfather, we didn't know until he passed away. He was also a watchmaker, jeweler, you know, what he had given back. And that's just the way I like to do things. For me, it's just about, it's always a part of my awareness. In the live shows that will be upcoming, or other things in watchmaking, on television, and so on and so forth that I'll be doing, um, you know, it, it'll always be mentioned as we're mentioning it here. Mm -hmm. And I have a new autism song that's coming out that uh, should pretty much, it's just, it's just unbelievable. Yeah. It's good listening for everyone. Red Lamb was, was great. It was a thrash metal band. Uh, that type of music only reaches so far. Um, I grew up on all kinds of music. I did not listen to the music I created. In my house, it was um, you know Miles Davis and yeah. Billie Holiday and Benny Goodman and Frank Sinatra and you know the big band era and you know of course heavy metal you know came later for me in the form of of Aerosmith and avant-garde type bands, so the music I created, um, did, you know, was a, a plethora of of genres. So that's what you're going to get with Voices of Extreme. Wow, I love that. Um, that just brought me back to my brother and I, you know, going through rock and roll when we were kids. And um, you and my brother are about the same age, so I I can't wait to share this with my brother because. God's done a, a, a larger work in his life too, bringing him to the Lord. And it, for me, it's just been special. Um, and so is there any way like uh, the next coming album music release that you got going on, when that's ready, uh, can you come back on the show and, and share that with us? Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. Um, yeah, go ahead, Rich. I'll say that's great news. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah we're, we're hard at work. We're hard at work here. We finished three videos and and all that um, that goes along with this. And there's just once again, I'm, I am back to music full time for the basically for the first time since my former band. You know, I've dabbled here and dabbled there, but now I've picked up my flying V, and pretty much now it's all over. <laughs> you know, yeah. but now I also have my Weissen born, which is you know, a, quite a unique instrument, and um, the, the whole luxury uh, world over there is taking notice of these wacky credentials I have thanks to many other facets, but most recently the, the new CNN documentary um, reaching millions and millions now. Um, and that's only God doing that. God can only do that. Um, it's, it's just a beautiful thing to see. It's hard work. We have to work for the kingdom. Um, as it's written, don't sit in your house with your blessing and just wait. He's going to give me my money to get my business going. He's going to give me the song and I'm going to, I'm going straight to Madison Square Garden and playing. It's going to be sold out. You know, it, it's written. You bet, you know, he'll give you everything you need. We all have everything we need if you are truly saved. You know what though? Get your butt in motion and get those blessings. Go catch them. Make sure you have a good prayer team around you, such as you guys, you know, can arrange or you guys yourself, and make sure you're not making that left turn and that right turn. And I keep saying, 
because I remember when I was newly saved, you know, someone read the passage of, you know, um, you know, taking a step and praying about it and all that is wonderful. But you know, you're still drinking baby's milk. I'm still drinking baby's milk. You know, at each little step. But that's the way I have to look at it. That you know, as intelligent as as God has gifted me to be in certain areas, um, I have to think almost almost like get rid of all that because the enemy attacks our mind. That's our weakest point, as we all know. So you know, that's that's his infiltration, and we need people around us to keep you know. As artists, we usually have a very loving and soft heart. We're easily attacked. So, um, you know, and I won't turn my heart to stone. It will never happen, no matter how many times I'm persecuted and how many times wrong things come my way um, or twists and turns. I will always just have not just the love for Christ, but love in my heart for everybody, and nobody will rob that from me. Hmm. Awesome. Uh, before we get to our last thing, uh, you mentioned the CNN documentary. Uh, how can we catch that? Um, CNN has a video channel called The Great Big Story, and it's actually bigger and viewed uh, more than actually CNN anymore because of the change of demographics and how people view everything now. We don't really have time. Nobody really watches TV anymore. Um, you know, that's, yeah. that's why we're doing things like this. Um, so they moved over to, to, to that for their, their informative short stories. So there's actually a part one that's on there now, and there will be a part two once the music is released. And then there's something else I'm working on that makes that look. Um, yeah. uh, but, but it's very it's a very interesting short story that uh, lets people know about my uh, kind of cross pollinization of what, what I did for those ten years of um, having. Christ really moving my life and living in Switzerland on and off and oh boy the stories I have from there where it's a French speaking place and trying to find the church to worship in and uh, mm -hmm. yeah there's, there's, there's some stories there so uh, it's a short story of, of where I live and because you know, most people in music just think I disappeared somewhere where I didn't you know I needed that quiet time with Christ and what better than to you know, work on masterpieces in a room where you can hear a pin drop on the floor and, um, and just sit there and, you know, and go to church and worship the Lord. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So um, this is the one question that we ask everybody that comes on the show and just want to get this last thing in here for you to hear, you know, how you respond to this. Out of all that we talked about, out of all that you've been through, um, what's the one thing that you keep coming back to? I'm glad God saved me. Hmm. Opened my eyes to see. Because before I, I, other people have said it, you know, I, I, I look at my, my previous life, and um, I do feel like that, that was just a wet, dirty rag, you know, of, of filth, and disgust. Um, the accomplishments were worldly. They were prideful. They were, you know, oh yay, I'm at the Grammys. You know, it's it's filled with pride. How how far you can go to get those achievements and things, cars, houses, whatever it may be. And I can go on and on, and I don't need to in that lifestyle. Um, even in a, a clean band that we were, um, when my band, obviously, past band, obviously still going very strong. Um, but to have your eyes open and to see the glory of the Lord and to do the good works of the Lord means more to me than anything. I don't need anything. I don't want anything. There's no material object that makes me happy. Um, I'm happy basking in the glory of the Holy Spirit in prayer <laughs> a lot more than anything else. That's what means something to me talking to somebody and leading them um, to saving souls, watching my friends develop things like their own movements, such as, you know, say the whosoever's or whatever it may be, because, you know, the Christian box has closed them all out. So people like us, are, we're rebels, you know. We, oh, you close us out? Watch me. So <laughs> we'll just start our own movement. The right way for the younger generation, we know what they want. And we're going to get to them. We're going to save some souls. That's what me and my friends do. When yeah. you say no, 
you know what? What do we need? God will provide. Watch us go. Okay, you guys stay over there. Okay, I have your little Christian festivals with your little, you know, poly purebred. You know, everybody's safe over there. You guys all safe? Cool. All right, great. Right, okay. We, we, we got the message over there. You won't see any of us over on your side anymore. You know, we're just going to do it over here. And you know what? Isn't it working? Mm. Uh, you're seeing it everywhere. You're seeing thousands of people after certain, some of my friends after their shows coming, you know, being led into venues after huge shows for free, not paying $3,000 for a meet and greet to meet a rock star or something, mm -hmm. only to save souls. So if we save five of those people to say the sinner's prayer, the rest of it don't matter. Those are the people I'll see into the forevermore. Man. I hope that makes sense. I'm, I'm, I hope I'm not coming across in any... No. Inspiring. Pushy, prideful manner or anything like that. But you know what? I'm going to be pushy. I'm not going to be prideful. It's just how I'm built. I'm built to speak the truth and I'm built to go out there. And when you tell me no and it, now it's for God, you better get out of my way. <laughs> <laughs> you, you. That's not pride, Dan. That that's uh, pride is when we think of ourselves any way that God doesn't think of us. So if we're supposed to do something and we know it, it's not pride. It's not pride. No. It, yeah, I know. But it, if if you're starting out now in the arts field, be it you're a painter or what it is, we can listen to these words that we're speaking, and they're very meaningful. But if you've been in the industry, or whatever that industry is in the arts for a long time, and you're not someone like me who doesn't really need a manager because we know the business ends of things ourselves, you're being like, you're like a puppet. They're telling you, hey, wait a minute, you're married? Don't say you're married. That's not good for what you're doing. You know, don't do this. You know, don't, don't talk, don't, don't put that on your, on your avenue that, you know, a, a, a quote from the Bible. You'll turn people off, you know. All those kind of things, you know, you're going to have someone trying to put you in that box again. And, uh, you know, luckily, um, nowadays, you, know, you can be who you want to be. And believe it or not, being who I am and putting those things out there, it's been, it's been the opposite effect of what you might think or what a manager type guy in a suit might think actually is. People love that we're honest about who we are and what we are. Hmm. Awesome. Well, fellow Texan, watchmaker, um, lead guitarist, lover of Jesus, Dan Spitz. Uh, if you want to find out more, uh, go to danspitz.com. Read his story. See the music. Listen to it. Uh, be aware of what God is doing through him because there is much, much more to come. And, Dan, we hope to have you. We're, we want to already. We're going to have you back on another show once the music is down and you're ready to go. Uh, but my brother, thank you so much for joining us today. It's my pleasure. My pleasure to, to be with you guys. It's, uh, it works the opposite way. Uh, uh, very sweet. And Rich, as always, bro, thanks for being here with us. Yeah, my honor. And it's such great, great to meet you, Dan, and hear your story. Very inspired. Love you, brother. Yeah, indeed. Uh, Dan, would you pray us out? Sure. Right. Almighty God, I thank you, Lord, and... Uh, we just praise you, Lord, for you are the King of kings and Lord of lords. Um, we just lift you up on high, Lord, and we thank you, Lord, for this uh, this wonderful words that you have given us, the words out of my mouth. Um, I hope I was a wonderful representation of what you are in me to the world, Lord. And uh, I just thank you for all the gifts that you've given all of us, Lord, and whoever's watching, that, um, that they may use those gifts for our kingdom, Lord, and uh, for your glory, Lord. And that... Um, it just is so far-reaching, Lord, that it brings more and more people in the art fields together to this massive movement that just cannot be stopped, Lord, a massive movement of love, Lord, for you are love. You are love, and you are the love in us, around us, and everywhere, Lord, for we just love you. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Dan. And, uh, guys, uh, be sure to join us back in about two weeks or four weeks, as mentioned before, we're going to have Tommy Walker as our next guest. That's going to be a lot of fun. And also our season finale can up on the first week of June. And then after that, we start season six, in which we're going to have this awesome dude coming back to the show. So thank you for that, Dan, again. And um, Rich also, as always, man, thank you. It's not the same without Tony today. So miss Tony. Yeah, miss Tony. 
Uh, Tony's going to be back with us on the next one. He texted me. He had a lot, little uh, studio emergency today. But anyway, uh, thank you guys so much for coming in. Um, I know we're reaching a broader audience right now because Dan's invited his friends, and we have more of our friends watching, and so this is what it's about. Uh, it's about telling the message and story that Christ has done what God has done in your life and sharing that out. And like with Dan, I couldn't have put it a better way, going back into the minefield. So do that. Yeah. We'll see you guys next time. WorshipTeenTraining.com, our Hangout Podcast. We love you guys. See you all back very soon. Bye.